Well, hello everybody in the YouTube pipe community. I wanted to share with you uh, what life is like for me in the shop. Um, building pipes doesn't always go the way that uh, you originally intend them to go. And before I get into this, incidentally, I've got some tobacco drying here. As I get going, I've got some Thomas's blend from Emerson Southern Forged that I'm going to be uh, lighting up in this Danish egg I made a couple of years ago, one of my favorite pipes. Uh, so anyway, yesterday I was working on uh, making an egg out of this uh, piece of olive and it's just got some beautiful figuring in it and I was really excited to see how this was going to turn out. My intention was to uh, put a piece of uh, uh, this is a mammoth tusk, stabilized mammoth tusk and uh, I was turning it, it's going to be a 9 uh, millimeter uh, filtered pipe. Turn it, everything was going okay, got the stem uh, all set up. Uh, I'm sorry, but the shank got it all set up and got the tusk ring set on the shank. Turned it around in the, uh, in the jaws and began turning this part. My tool wasn't sharp enough, obviously, and it caught. And what it did was it, it wrenched this real hard to the left, knocked it out of, uh, out of the jaws, and uh, this shank ring slammed into the tool rest and took a big chunk out of the, uh, out of the uh, tusk. Now the fortunate thing is, is that this, the, the, uh, the, the tenon that I cut here on the mortise was not damaged, it, it's fine. And uh, so what I did was I, I t took some of that blue painter's tape and I taped around this, mixed up some uh, epoxy and dumped it down in that opening in the cavity and tried to get it about to the level of the, uh, the mortise, the olive mortise, but so that it doesn't go over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to chuck this back up in the, uh, in the lathe. I'm going to use the 10.2 uh, millimeter drill bit as the centering pin for this so that I can get this chucked up. Uh, it's going to be off a little bit. There's just no uh, getting away from that, but I'll do the best I can to get this thing centered properly so that it, it turns true to the way that it originally turned. I'll go ahead and face this down to, to, to level this off, and then w because I'm going to do that, I'm going to lose some depth in this mortise. And the depth that I need uh, I'll, in order to accommodate both the uh, the tenon and that little the nub of the filter that'll stick out about uh, I don't know about three sixteenths I think off the end of that uh, uh, that tenon insert. Uh, I'm going to add a piece of I don't know maybe some uh, ivorite or something on here to give it some lift and then I'll, I'll re-drill that and then we'll finish this so that it's got a um, piece of tusk and then there will be a, a layer of uh, some other material to give it some, some height and so I'll have enough uh, depth in that mortise to accept the tenon and the filter and then we'll go about just finishing it and it uh, should be just fine, should look good. And this all assumes that I don't screw up again. So uh, meet me at the lathe here in a couple of minutes. Let me get this set up and then I'll be right back to you. Okay, so I'm back again. <clears throat> what I've done is I've chucked this uh, block back in uh, on the lathe. I've used this 10.2-millimeter uh, uh, drill bit, which is the diameter, inside diameter of the, uh, the mortise bore uh, that, to accept that tenon. And uh, it, it, spins, it spins pretty good. It's pretty true. There's not uh, I don't feel any binding, really. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and tighten this down. And then uh, uh, we're going to go ahead uh, and I'll show you how to, I'm going to reface this, uh, uh, the mortise. I'll use a, uh, a Forstner bit to do that. I think part of the problem that I had was I didn't have these set screws turned down tight, tightly enough. And when it caught, uh, it was able to, 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 to move it. And um, it went right into the, this tool rest and um, smashed the, a chunk out of that uh, material. So I'll back this out. Change out this tool. Now I put the, uh, uh, the epoxy on there 
in there last night and let that set overnight, so it's, it's good and hard. Shouldn't have a problem uh, with it that way. All right, well, let's, give this a, let's give this a go and see how it oh, Not tight. All right, that's going to be a problem. i got to recheck this. I didn't have this tight. I don't know why. So uh, I'm going to recheck this. I'll be right back. Okay, I put the 10.2 millimeter drill bit back in here, tested it, make sure it's centered fine. So the fact that this was not uh, torqued all the way down is not going to have uh, an impact on this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go at this very slowly. The thing that I don't want to do is have something fly apart here. Um, should be okay, but hey, it's me in the shop, and this is what happens sometimes. Okay, so what I was trying to achieve here is to face this down so that everything's flush. The, uh, the, the uh, olive mortise and the, uh, the, this piece of uh, tusk and epoxy, is, uh, it's all flush all together. So now I can go ahead and work on figuring out what I'm going to put on here. Um, I do have to make up, make up a little bit of uh, depth here so that I'll get a proper fit. I don't know. I, don't, I might not have to. I think I might be able to go just with it as it is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to add a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, end up where uh, I don't have enough distance between the end of this tenon and the bottom of this bore, because it, the uh, the filter will mash up against the air the the, uh, the draft openings. I don't want that. I want it to be to fit better than that. So I'm gonna have to add a little bit uh, of, of material on here. So uh, I'll go dig in the uh, in the bin of pieces and parts and uh, come up with what I want to put on here for this uh, this decoration that'll cap this and then also uh, what I'm going to use for the stem. I'll be right back. Okay, after much deliberation, I think I've come up with the combo that I want to uh, employ here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of faux ivory and I'm going to uh, uh, fix it here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll redrill the uh, the bore for the uh, stem tenon so that it'll take the, the filter, uh, nine, millimeter, nine millimeter filter. <clears throat> This will get ground down, and then I'm going to I'm going to do a uh, a concave um, the uh, the mortise end here. Then I'm going to use this piece of acrylic, pretty stuff. I think it's going to go real well with the the brown epoxy color uh, and the uh, sort of the earth tones that are in this piece of tusk, and then also the uh, colors that are in this piece of uh, olive. And I think that'll turn out to be a pretty nice stem. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead. I'm going to cut this down. I think this will be about a two inch, maybe two and a quarter inch uh, stem. And that'll give you, I don't know, about a six inch, five and a half to six inch pipe all, uh, end to end. Uh, I think I want that because uh, this is going to have a bend to it. It's probably going to be a little bit, this is pretty dense, it's going to be a little bit heavier. Um, and uh, I have to keep, maintain the size of this so that it's in proportion here. I've got a pretty big bore in here, uh, so I want to keep a decent amount of material on the shank for the strength. So I can't cut this down too much, it has to remain proportionate. So uh, I'll do the best I can to reduce the weight. But I, in the end, I'm going to have to uh, have a lot of really good solid balance in this so that when you're clenching this pipe, um, there's not too much weight on your jaw. Just, you know, it'll feel comfortable. So I'm going to go cut this down and uh, we'll get this all set up. I'll be back. Well, I have epoxied the, uh, that adornment piece, uh, that cap on here. And uh, it's five minute epoxy. Um, It'll take a little bit of time yet for it to cure. The next step with this is for me to grind this down, this part. This stuff is uh, hard to turn for me, so I, I generally just grind it down. So we'll grind, the next thing with this, when this is all set up, is to go ahead and grind this down and then uh, continue working on this. But in the meantime, I've got this piece of acrylic cut to length. So I've epoxied this piece of uh, ivorite just as I said it was going to. I've got to wait for this to set up, and then once this sets up, I'm going to uh, go to the wheel, I'll grind this down so that these uh, two surfaces are sort of flush, and get me to the point where I can begin uh, 
fitting the stem to it. Once, it, once that's done, uh, I'm going to drill down through here, 10.2 millimeters, and uh, this will just join right in with the existing bore that's cut there to accept the tenon in this mortise. So that's got to finish setting up, but in the meantime, I can go ahead and get the, uh, begin working this stem. And uh, what I've done is I've found the center of the stem and used a punch to, to uh, locate that. We'll get this set up in the chuck, and the first uh, thing that I will do is I'll go ahead and I'll drill the four millimeter, uh, uh, it's a tapered bit, it'll come to about this, this distance, and then um, I've got a, um, uh, uh, it's a, a 1 16th inch thick drill bit that I'll go through to the end here with. And uh, that'll come out the end, and this will be the end that I'll slot. Um, and then once I'm done doing that, I'll drill this at 10.2 uh, millimeters, and I'll take my uh, insert and I'll, I'll glue that in. And um, then this one will set aside, and uh, once I get the mortise to about the diameter that I want it, then I'll begin working on this stem. So they both kind of come together um, as, a, as a set, as opposed to doing one fully and then coming back and doing the other, at least on this pipe anyway. Yeah, it's not the best balance, but these things are not uh, perfectly cylindrical, so uh, do the best you can. First thing I'll do is go ahead and face this. And this will stay in the, uh, in the chuck until I'm, I'm done doing all the drilling. That way I can make sure that I've got the same zero all the way through and, and that this uh, face is, is exactly perpendicular uh, to the tenon. Four millimeter tapered bit. You see, this comes to a comes to a fine point there. And what this does is this gives a, a sort of a gradual closing down of the opening inside uh, this piece of acrylic. So as we get to the to the end, I've got enough room to get my uh, uh, my funneling tool in there. Uh, and then what I do is I, I open expand the opening this way as opposed to this way. And then by expanding it this way, I'm able to uh, keep the height as, as, uh, uh, of the opening as as small as possible so that I can reduce the outside thickness of the bit without cutting into the uh, draft, because I've done that before, and that's just not a happy experience. Because generally, that's a thing that will happen at the very end of the process, and um, I don't like that. Now, marking the depth of this, I'm going to go ahead and I will drill to this uh, to this blue mark. That way, I don't over drill. You notice I've run it in, back it out, run it in, back it out. The idea is to uh, eliminate the shavings because sometimes they'll hang up in the flutes and that creates a lot of heat and it causes the drill bit to bind. I remember one time here, not long ago, I was a little too aggressive and uh, didn't take the precautions and I ended up snapping a drill bit off inside a piece of acrylic. Uh, end of drill bit, end of uh, material. Time to start over again. And then I'll just run it in one more time here to try to clean it out a little bit. There's pieces. My next cut is with this uh, 16th inch. Um, and again, this makes a very small opening at the end of the rod so that I don't uh, end up cutting through into the draft as I file this thing down. Now before I drill and insert the tenon, I'm going to uh, turn this so that it's, the outside diameter is, is true um, and it's, uh, it's concentric to the, to the center.
So as I'm thinking about this while I was working on it, the opening in this uh, in this mortise, I'm going I'm to cut a pocket in here, and it's going to be a half inch, um, and just a, just a small pocket so that the end of this stem will seat down in there. Um, and uh, what that means then is I can go ahead and I can take this down to a half inch um, and actually begin shaping this now as opposed to waiting because, uh, um, you know, if I do it now, um, then I can go ahead and insert my, drill it and insert the tenon. If I don't do it now, I can't insert the tenon because it's, they're, they're not real, um, they don't take a lot of punishment. And I have to put this centering uh, tool in, and if I put that into the, that uh, uh, tenon and I tighten it down, that nylon might split. Don't want to do that. And it might knock it out of shape. So I can go ahead and get everything done on this that I possibly can, at least as it relates to this part down here. And then um, I'll finish the rest of it uh, after I get the, uh, the tenon put in because I'll be grinding it on the wheel. So what I want to do is take my uh, calipers to a half inch. And probably just a little less, and then that way I, got, I know I've got enough clearance. So I'll be taking this down to, uh, to a half inch.
Okay, that's, this is probably a decent shape. So this will sit down in the, uh, the little cavity of the recess that I'm going to make on the end of the, the mortise. Um, I've gone as far as I, I, I want to go on the diameter here. Uh, ideally, this will be a little thinner, but that will be taken care of when I turn it uh, or grind it on the wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and change out this tool, put the, the, uh, the drill chuck in, and uh, chuck up that 10.2-millimeter uh, bit so that we can install this uh, tenon. All right, so here's the tenon. We're going to drill this out. I've got a mark on here uh, that uh, is the stop. At least I thought I had a mark. There it is. Uh, so we've got a mark on here. This is the stop. Uh, this will give me enough recess in there to be able to uh, seat this and um, accept that filter. Got to go kind of slow here, carefully. Back out a bit and let this cool down. Uh, the heat is the thing that you don't want because that'll change the shape of this. So I have to go kind of slowly, give this thing a little bit of a break, let it cool down, and then go back at it again. All right, that's it for that. All right. Got through that without incident. That's always good. I don't know for some reason the way that these are, are formed. Uh, it's nylon, so I imagine they're uh, uh, formed in a mold. There's some flash around the edges. So I got to walk away here and uh, take some of this off so that it'll actually uh, be able to be driven into this opening. Okay, so now we've got, uh, got the stem set up. Got it, uh, got it turned to the basic shape. We've inserted this, this tenon, uh, and uh, this, will be, um, this will be ready to go. Next operation with this is to take it over to the, uh, the Dremel, cut the slot in it, and uh, it'll be ready to, uh, to be shaped. I've ground down the outside diameter of the cap that I installed on this. And uh, I'm gonna go uh, back to the, the lathe here. I'm gonna mill out a little pocket here, half inch pocket. And then we're gonna go ahead and drill the, uh, the 10 millimeter uh, bore to open that up so that our stem will fit in here. Then once I'm done doing that, that's all I'm gonna do on this. I'll be done with the, uh, with the mortise. And I'll go to then turning out the, uh, the bolt. All I'm doing here is creating a centering or locating uh, divot in that so that when I begin drilling the larger diameter here, I don't end up with the drill bit drifting and um, causing a problem for me. Make sure it's the right one.
don't know what this ivory, faux ivory is made of, what the material is, but when you cut it, it smells to me like daffodils or tulips or something like that. Some sort of flower. All right, so both of these line up. This, this stem, drum roll. So this is this is tight. Um, this diameter on these these tenons, there's variation in it, and I don't want to go. That's going to work. That's going to be fine. But I don't want to force that in there. Uh, I'm going to take some sandpaper and open this up a little bit. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a um, countersink bit, and I'm going to drop that a little bit in there. Just cut a cut a, uh, a chamfer on the inside of this opening. Just make it seat a lot neater. I notice also when I'm narrating this, I have a tendency to say we are going to do, and uh, I only see me. I don't know, maybe my pronouns are me. That should do. That should be good. All right, so I've gotten this thing out of danger so far. Uh, there'll be some more uh, shaping and grinding on this. This is going to be a, uh, a convex surface here. That should look kind of cool. And we'll put this in. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be all right. So many times, the pipes I make, they end up with a flare and then a flare. And uh, I think I'm going to try something a little different with this. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going to go ahead now and take this out of the chuck. I'm going to flip it so you can see this particular center line. I have to line up this center line uh, with the center line here and uh, locate it on with the, uh, with the chuck because I want to turn this as much as I can. At least get the original uh, reference shape. It's not going to be easy because this has been extended. So I'm gonna have a hard time getting in here. I'll probably have to cut it, position my tool this way in order to in order to get at it. We'll see how it goes. So now I have this set up so that I can I can cut from the edge here. I think what I'm gonna have to do is uh, use this, this uh, bowl gouge and just try to work it away a little bit to try to get some of this material off around the opening. Uh, all I'm trying to do here is uh, with this right now, given that this is extended so far, is to achieve some sort of reference so that when I take it to the wheel, I can follow that reference. And as you look down on the top of the, the pipe, it'll look concentric. So let's give it a try. Cross your fingers. So I think I've gone as far as I can go on the lathe with this, given its shape, 
and uh, what I can do on a on a wood lathe. I think with a metal lathe, you know, you can bring your tool up and kind of get in there with it. Um, but when you've got that long extension on it, you've got no choice but to deal with the angles that you can that you you know that you can only achieve with your uh, with the tools. So take this out, and um, I'm going to take this. Oh, perfect. So I've given myself a reference here, and now I can use this, grind all this off, and um, shape this. And, and you know now I can begin uh, shape it with the, the stem in there, and then that way I can get a better idea of the overall proportions and um, you know what's what's actually going to look right. I'm going to check here at the uh, the angle of my draft, and um, I can see by doing this I have plenty of room at the bottom here, so I can I can get some pretty good shape in this without getting close to the draft. So that's good. All right, so um, upward and onward. Um, meet me at the grinding wheel. Thanks. So I took the liberty of uh, doing all the gross shaping on this rather than subject you to all that uh, time of grinding away. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, begin working the finer shape on this. It's still kind of heavy, uh, so I'm going to be taking more off. The idea is to remain as uh, uh, as concentric as possible about the center of this. And so I'll be using an 80 grit on a, on a smaller cushion wheel to uh, re keep reducing this down and getting uh, more defined shape, uh, especially around the neck. So uh, I'll go ahead and record that. You'll see how this goes.
All right, so as you can see, uh, we've got the, uh, the stem roughed out. Uh, it's cut down somewhat. Uh, I don't want to remove all of that material with a file. That's the next operation of the file. Um, I'll cut the, um, the buttons in and then start taking this down. You can see in here, this is kind of translucent. You can see how the uh, air opening, the draft is funneled. Um, so the next uh, operation on this is to, uh, to cut this. I'm not going to record that. You don't want to watch that. It's like watching paint dry. But I'll be back when I've got that done. Okay, so I'm, I'm really happy that I've been able to save this pipe. Uh, if you recall at the beginning, there was a chunk that was broken out here of the mammoth tusk, and I filled that with epoxy. And uh, that's going to buff up just fine. And uh, it's interesting how this mammoth tusk, it, it's got about the same uh, color scheme as uh, this olive. And uh, I think this is going to turn out to be a really good looking pipe. So uh, I'm going to keep at this. I've, I've uh, uh, ground this down um, to about four millimeter uh, thickness here where you would clench it. Uh, I've got a lot of sanding left to do on this. Uh, it's all from uh, hand sanding now. Um, I'll begin with 400 grit and I'll wet sand this whole thing and then I'll go to 600 grit. And I may end up going to 800 I don't, on this, I don't know. It just depends on uh, how it looks once I uh, run it over the, run the buffer over it for the first time. There's a lot of little microscopic, uh, or not, you know, small scratches. I may have to take those out with a higher grit. So uh, I think the next section of video, what I'm going to do is uh, just uh, film the, uh, the finish, the, the buffing and oiling. That way you don't have to spend a lot of time watching how the sausage is made. Okay, so here we are with the pipe. Uh, as we've got it to this point, uh, what I've done is I've run it on the, the wheel, taken it down to uh, a 600 grit uh, sandpaper. I've buffed it, and um, I'm not seeing... Usually when you buff when I buff a pipe, especially if it's a, always when it's a smooth pipe, before I do the last sanding, I'll buff it, and I'll look closely in bright light to see if any scratches are jumping out at me. It's when you put the wax on and you really get a high sheen is when your uh, scratches are going to pop out and you'll be able to see them. I, I can see some here, so I'm going to go ahead and rub this a little bit with the sandpaper, some up here, but everything else looks pretty decent. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed is on when I turn this stem, uh, sometimes the heat between the uh, material, the acrylic material especially, and the, uh, the tool will cause the uh, acrylic to kind of roll up a little bit and it, it leaves it rough. So I have a little bit of sanding here to do. Uh, the other thing that I noticed was that there was a couple of minor little divots in the uh, epoxy where I filled to make up for the crash that I had uh, in, in uh, damaging this this tusk. Fill it in, the, you know, it blends in nicely, but what I've had to do is take a little more epoxy and, and just put a film of it over there, to, over top of that, to fill in any of those little gaps. So I have that to sand yet, too. So I'm going to go to six, and that's going to be 600 grit as well. So I'll be able to finish this off with um, a 600 grit, and then uh, the next thing that I'll show you is uh, bending, this, bending this stem, putting a bend in the stem, okay? I don't know if you're able to catch this. This uh, mammoth tusk is really interesting stuff. There's like a crosshatch type pattern in that. It almost looks like, looks like fish scale. Uh, yeah, it's something to really lay eyes on. Very cool. And this part here is really just about just about done and ready to uh, go back to the, to the buffing wheel. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the sandpaper here, just, just lightly. All I'm trying to do is smooth off the top, take the scratches out. There's a little bit of uh, dust from the uh, what's being sanded away, and you can tell where to sand because the dust, many particles catch in the little recesses and stuff. And so, I can continue to sand on this until those little white specks are gone, and then I know that I've got the surface completely smooth. And I think I'm about there with this. Going a lot of different directions, up and back and forth and in circles. All right, that looks pretty good. And then I thought I saw some some scratches on the side that would be picked up once this gets buffed out. Ah, you see them. That's pretty good there. Go ahead and work on this little 
part of the stem here, just to take that little little uh, mat or sort of dull uh, material off, sand that down. Again, not putting a lot of pressure on the paper. I'm not trying to gouge this. I just want to take the take the tops off. Anytime the subject moves out of the frame, I apologize. It's not much of a, uh, a field of vision with this phone, and uh, I don't have to move a whole lot, and it, it drops out of the frame, so I apologize for that. It's interesting. You can have 99.9% .9 of this, the surface, just the way you want it. And if you have that one tenth of one percent, that isn't sanded properly it, and, and doesn't blend in, it will stick out like a sore thumb. Believe me, I've had my share of sore thumbs. I think I'm about there with this. Sometimes the other thing that can happen is along this edge, you know, the, the teeth on the file will come over the edge and leave little grooves in it and uh, you just don't pick it up until You've buffed it out completely. And then the other thing you can have happen with this material, same thing with ebonite as you could have happen with acrylic, is it'll look just fine as it is here now. But when I bend this, I'm elongating, stretching this. And if there are any scratches on this side, it'll open those scratches up and they'll be plain as day. And you've got to come back in and, and sand some more on it. Okay, so let's take this over to the buffer and uh, we'll, uh, we'll put a uh, last uh, buffing on it before we apply the oil and, uh, and bend the stem. And then you'll notice I keep my finger in the tobacco chamber. Keep the pipe from getting away from me. And once in a while, it'll catch the other wheel and it'll shoot off into the wall. Sometimes it'll bounce off of the deck. Never do. I found that if I dress the wheel with white diamond and um, touch just the very outside tips for the moth, I get a much better result. I have to oil this. Hoping that you can see this. This uh, acrylic just reflects so much light. It's nice stuff. Beautiful.
Okay, so here we have the pipe. It's uh, buffed out. It's beautiful. This, this uh, olive is uh, the grain in this. Really striking. I thought about sandblasting this, but I think I made the right choice of leaving it, leaving it smooth. Here's a spot right here I didn't get. Okay, so this is ready to uh, bend the stem and uh, hook up the, the heat gun and uh, we'll bend the stem. All right, in bending the stem, the first thing I'll do is I'll insert a, a pipe cleaner into the draft here. And the reason for this is so that this doesn't close up when I heat it. Starting to get there. Look at this thing soft enough that um, I don't run the risk of breaking it or splitting it as I bend it. Because you have some part of it that's hot and the other part is not hot and enough to be pliable, and you can end up breaking it. Okay, so there we are. Hot stuff, man. So I'm bending this and I'm looking down from the front of the pipe to the back to make sure that I'm, uh, I don't have it tilted one way or the other. Starting to set up. Come on. I'm gonna spritz the water just to. And uh, at least to my eye, if I can get the, uh, the stem on about the same plane as this, is the top of the bowl, it tends to look pretty good that way. It doesn't look not bent enough or bent too much. So I think that's a, uh, that's a pretty good shape. So now I'll go ahead and inspect this for scratches and, and whatnot and put the final buffing on the stem. You know, this actually looks pretty good. I noticed there's some that uh, showed up right here, teeth marks from the, from the file. And a couple here. The back of it looks pretty good. So go ahead and finish us uh, a little sanding on this. Try to take these wee little scratches out here. interesting once you change the shape of something how um, I find little areas that uh, could be shaped a little bit better could be high spots that kind of thing especially on a button something that you're gonna have your the smokers gonna have their tongue on that uh, you'd really be able to feel high spots you don't want that all right this looks pretty darn good go ahead and do the last buffing on this stem and then uh, we'll apply the oil My favorite part, making it shine. And the thing with acrylic, you know, you can see the, the funneling in the airway. So I'll go ahead and apply some oil to this. And uh, what I'll do is I'll oil it. I heat it up a little bit, the, the, uh, the wood. Oil it, and uh, that opens any pores that can be open. That'll do that. 
and then um, give it a little while, and then I'll wipe it down real good. And that leaves a, a film of oil enough that uh, it, it puts a nice finish on it. And then when it's buffed out, it, uh, it creates a very nice hard shine. So what we have here is one finished pipe. I'm happy with this. I started out with a wreck and uh, was able to save it and uh, turn it into, I think, a, a pretty, uh, pretty stunning finished product. I'll be posting this soon on my website. It's uh, Papa Bear's Handmade Briar Pipes, but it's the abbreviation. So pbhbp.com. So you can, uh, you can see this and other pipes on my website as well. Thanks for watching.